Out, out, poem by Robert Frost. The bus saw snarled and rattled in the yard and made dust and dropped stuff length sticks of wood, sweet scented stuff when the breeze drew across it. And from there, those the lifted eyes could count five mountain ranges, one behind the other. Under the sunset, far into Vermont, and the saw snarls and rattled, snarls and rattled. As it ran light, I had to bear a load, and nothing happened. The day was all but done. Call it a day, I wish they might have said, to please the boy by giving him the half hour that a boy counts so much when safe from work. His sister stood beside them in an apron to tell them supper. At that word, he saw, as if to prove Saws knew what supper meant, leaped out of the boy's hand or seemed to leap. He must have given the hand. However, it was neither refused the meeting, but the hand. The boy's first outcry was a rueful laugh as he swung towards them holding up the hand half in appeal, but half as if to keep the life from spilling. Then the boy saw all. Since he was old enough to know, big boy, doing a man's work, though a child at heart, he saw all spoiled. Don't let him cut my hand off. The doctor, when he comes, don't let him sister. So, but the hand was gone already. The doctor put him in the dark of ether, he lay and puffed his lips out with his breath. And then the watcher at his pulse took fright. No one believed. They listened at his heart. Little, less, nothing. And that ended it. No more to build on that. And they, since they were not the one dead, turned to their affairs. By Robert Frost. Out, out, poor. Questions on Robert Frost out out. Explain with, with textual evidence how the poet creates an effect of a sense of pity and poignancy for the little boy's death. Comment on the indifference expressed by the onlookers and bystanders. What does this tell you about their way of life? Write a two paragraph response following the peel technique. Out, out. Out, out. Tone is detached, matter of fact, pragmatic about situation. Report like, devoid of emotions in keeping with the life goes on theme. Reason it's a hard life. All have to pitch in, but sympathetic towards the one who dies. Out, out. Smell of mountain wood pervades the air. Idyllic setting. Parallel construction. Repetition, non-stop work, foreshadowing, the suspense. A bus saw given life on its own as animal-like qualities, the sonification of snarls, rattles, describes the loud jarring noises it makes, makes it menacing its power and potential to destroy, element of threat and danger, seen in how it can pulverize, make dust, and reduce huge lots of stuff like six of it. Detached, lift only eyes, so busy, no time to laze about and appreciate beauty. Noted for its idyllic settings, U.S. East Coast, and the scenery and beautiful mountains. In hindsight, it's an interjection, distortion, freak accident could have been, could not have been anticipated. With regret or sorrow, severed arm, awareness of death upon him, awareness of consequences of injury, leading to death, turns to her mother figure, Dramatic, 
cannot be saved. Anesthetic, dying breaths or like a child, change in tone, imagery, succinct. Suicidal and uh, medical professional. Suicidal wish, medical professional. And no future. Family, doctors, nurses, go, keep with the life goes on theme. Repetition of boy, tragedy and big boy. Distress is youth and adds to the ironic small boy doing man's work. Will not live to be a man. Diction, leap as if hungry, a pouncing on victims. Predatory animal image sustained significance of all. Out, out by Robert Frost. Focus, tone and technique. Tone, detached, report like. Details given in matter of fact manner. No emotions displayed in keeping with the theme that life goes on. Written in third person. A necessary pragmatism and practicality about life. Its harsh realities is evident. Harsh life. Small boy having to do a man's work. Bus saw at work all day without ceasing. Created by the repetition of snarls and rattles. And day was all but done. The latter emphasizes the long hours put in made all the more significant with a boy's pleasure at being let off half an hour earlier. Sister too has to pitch in and help. Doing adult work, mother figure, domestic chores, cook and care for the men folk. Contrast between idyllic surroundings, the, mount the mountains, and the sunset, the sweet scented air, and the incessant activity of work further emphasizes this harsh reality of making ends meet and earning enough to cater to everyday needs. Point is anchored at the end and last two lines. Since they were not the one dead, turn to the air fast. This seems to say that death is part and parcel of the kind of life they lead. It is a reality. Hence, this pragmatic and stoic perception towards death. It is as if they cannot afford the luxury of being sentimental or indulge in their grief. They have to move on from their, go about their affairs and work and duties as living is such a struggle. However, speaker seems to let slip his more tender emotions, namely sympathy or regret, where the boy is concerned. The boyish zest for life and freedom is conveyed in the spontaneous and natural joy that a child would feel at being allowed to go out and play instead of work. Thus, there is admiration too, as this boy seems to accept his responsibilities, duties and obligations without protest. The fact that he has had to grow up fast so as to carry out man's work while still very much a child at heart is heartrending, especially in the light of the tragedy or accident that snuffs out his young life. The regret is also detected as the poet emphasizes this boy's worldly wisdom. His awareness of the gravity of the accident shows how they had to make a virtual child do work for an adult or do work that an adult would find difficult to do. The freak nature of the accident confirms this as it could have happened to anyone. The tragedy then is made worse by the fact that circumstances and economic conditions. Being such, this boy was not out playing or being carefree. 
but had to be at work. Handling dangerous equipment and machinery. The reaction after the accident draws our sympathy. Is a rueful laugh together with his plea for his hand not to be cut off. It's poignant, especially since the poet has dropped the significant clues that things were going to go awry. Day was all but done. Call it a day, I wish they might have said. And nothing happened. Techniques, a repetition or parallel construction. The, the, the bus saw, snarled and rattled. The saw snarled and rattled, snarled and rattled. Purpose, to convey the ceaseless activity. For shadows and menace that lurked. Saw ends up causing the premature death of boy. Predatory image conveyed by snarled and rattled. Snarled and rattled. Think of a snake. Sinister danger. Sudden movement of saw as a snake. Sinks its deadly poison on victim. This is also done by the personification of the bus saw. That seems to have a life on its own. This prepares us for the confrontation. But the boy's hand. The saw, as the saw leapt out of the meat, use of euphemism to downplay, downplay the horrendous accident. The hand which was used to cut the wood. The use of euphemism to downplay the horrendous accident. The hand, which was used to cut the wood. Ironic. Bus saw is an instrument to carry out man's work, but it retaliates and becomes predatory. The boy saw all. He saw all spoiled. First time, the boy is raised in status somewhat, as he sees with adult eyes and maturity. The danger and seriousness of the situation dawns on him. On another level, one can interpret it to mean that he sees his life flash before him. A foreshadowing of what is to come, it is said that people who are about to experience, who are about to die experiences. Second time, far more emotive, arouses our sense of pity and amplifies the sense of tragedy. There is a note of finality as the boy becomes aware that all hopes of a future are dashed, that there's no chance of him surviving the wounds. The word all bears the weight of tremendous loss, of a life nipped in the bud of a future and potential of marriage and any of life's other experiences. The tragedy is made that much greater because of the boy's youth. Repetition of the hand, four times together with the boy's hand, my hand, draws attention to the severe hand. The significance of this is great. A man, if he had grown to adulthood without mishaps, realizes on his hands, relies on his hand to do all his work. Especially a manual worker in a sawmill. It would not only mean a loss of income, but a loss of status, worth, perhaps even manhood. In this case, the accident being so serious, it also foreshadows his death. Not only were they not able to save his hand, but the hand was gone already. It also resulted in the loss of his life. Foreshadowing techniques. 
lines four to six beyond the jarring sounds of the saw and the activities of the sawmill. The idyllic setting of the mountain ranges and the sunset served to foreshadow the tragedy that was to take place. It is as if there was just too much peace and serenity, beauty, and even all this tranquility was to be shattered soon. Also serves to provide a contrast between the picturesque setting and the harsh life of hard work the day that these folk have to go through. The personification of the bus saw, referred to notes earlier, its strength and potential for changes made that made dust pulverizes the wood and nothing happened prepares for the sudden turn of events frost attempts to create further suspense by adding after a colon the day was all but that by the alliteration the alliteration a common device in this poem is used to highlight the fact that the workday was not completely over. Hence, the accident or mishap is made more dramatic by the fact that a half an hour that a half an hour would have made a world of difference to this boy. And uh, the suddenness and freak nature of the mishap is thus amplified by this emphasis on the fact that it would have been just another routine day of work. Life from spilling foreshadows the boy's death. The boy loses too much blood to be saved. Tragic. Narrative intervention. The speaker is obviously not impartial, although the... Entire incident is described in a seemingly detached manner. Effect arouses reader's sympathy towards the situation of boy, heightens the tragic element. Purpose reveals the writer's compassion for the people. Effect arouses reader's sympathy towards the situation of boy, heightens the tragic element. Purpose reveals the writer's compassion for the people and the harsh realities they are faced with on a daily basis. Result of this, we do not judge them for their reaction. Lack of grief. Mm. Purpose reveals the writer's compassion for the people and the harsh realities they're faced with on a daily basis. Result of this, we do not judge them for their reaction, a lack of grief or pragmatism at the end of the poem, since they were not the one day that turned to the affairs. Supporting evidence. Call it a day, I wish they might have said. Obviously, this line is meant to foreshadow and create suspense, and it is written with hindsight, which heightens the pace and tension somewhat. A half hour that a boy counts so much to do and save from work. The child's youth and zest for life is emphasized here. The speaker's narrator's regret is The speakers and narrators regret. It's evident that the boy was who was deprived of even that half an hour, which could have been enjoyed running free and playing. It could have also meant that the boy's life may have been spared. The description of the accident is euphemized. The saw sustaining the personification reacts as eagerly to the call to a meal and breaks free as it leaped out of the boy's hand, 
by casting blame on the saw. The poet diffuses or diverts blame on the boy for not being careful. The appearance of the saw leaping reflects to the boy's own eagerness at being able to stop work again builds up on the regret requested expressed in the earlier lines. And uh, suddenly, as if the poet is unable to leave it at that, he goes on to add, he must have given his hand. The accident is described as a meeting. Again, the purpose or effect is to emphasize the freak nature of the accident or the fact that it actually happened so suddenly. But the hand, exclamation mark, used to create dramatic effect, creates a dramatic pause, poet masterfully manipulating the dramatic impact of the scene he's describing. Single two-letter word, so. In line 27 is dramatic, makes a time lapse, marks a time lapse, and sleeps, slips in all the details about how or how long it took the, for the boy to be taken to hospital. One suspects much time was lost. Considering the location of the sawmill, it is likely that it was a good distance from the hospital. Also, the fact that the hand could not be saved would indicate that serious damage to the tissues had been done already and that prevented the doctors from saving the hand. Also conveys a note of finality and that in a less direct manner. Uh, also the fact that the hand could not be saved would indicate the serious damage to the tissues had been done that prevented the doctors from saving the hand also conveys a note of finality, urgency, and immediacy that in a less direct manner prepares us or foreshadows us. Foreshadows for the death of the boy. Similar technique used to describe the boy's death. Similar technique used to describe the boy's death, little less nothing. Once again, Frost uses punctuation marks to create the charismatic effect, or the dramatic effect, sorry, together with the short and succinct phrase. And that ended it after the hyphens and the dashes with the exclamation mark. The usage of punctuation is also important. Okay, thank you.